And I'm assuming someone is moving this, so it is before us. I heard that. Is there a second? All right. So it is before us for your discussion. And what is before us is these, this document and the acceptance of this as a way of being together as a conference. Is there a discussion? Microphone three, please. Thank you, Bishop Ed Ziders, St. Paul State College. Clergy. I'm sorry? I'm just reminding us all that you're clergy. I am, that's true. <laughs> it's actually a wonderful thought, thank you. It just struck me how significant that is. I want to say a word on behalf of the Commission of Child Advocacy and to address that to Mike. Uh, we had a conversation a Tuesday a week ago about the placement of agencies and their concerns that were deleted from the emerging structure. I left that conference call with a certain assurance that the Commission was going to be reinstated because of its research and its promises to this conference. So I don't want to debate the structure. I want to ask if that is the case. Yeah, one of the things I said in that video when I was a star was we've discovered that building a house was really messy. So is this. And all of the answers are not there yet. The Child Advocacy Co Committee can be handled in a couple different ways. It could be handled as one of the standalone advocacy groups, since it is an adv advocacy group primarily, or it might be handled as a task force under one of the other uh, ministry teams. That's the, the beauty of this is we're not going to lose anything we have. It's just going to be shifted around in such a way that we'll be able to talk to one another about what's going on. Uh, that's also the same thing. I, I owe this to J Peace and Justice ask the same question because this annual or general conference says now that we must have a Peace with Justice group. And uh, so that's not on here either. We're, we're looking, you know, we're gonna, this will be adjusted and, and brought back to you again and again and again as we move forward. The reason I raised the question yesterday is precisely related to the answer that you gave. I have to make an assumption, which may be a faulty one, but I've been at this for a while, that the commitments we made last annual conference to carry the Commission through 2014 with its research on the condition of the children and youth within the Commonwealth is an important research and development strategy for the annual conference. I wish I could just sit down here, Bishop, and you may order me to do that, but where I work right now in State College at St. Paul's and with all that is going on in my parish and my community and across the Commonwealth, it would be tragic in my mind to reduce the advocacy position to a task group. I don't think that can be accomplished, the task, in the same way that you may or we may evolve the structure. So I want to say a word for kids. I want to say a word for abused kids. I want to say a word on behalf of those that I know now from my own congregation who are abused kids. And for all of us who know what that means in this place, the Commission's mandate when I got back from Ohio was to do the very thing that we are doing. And I want to support that with all the spiritual energy I can muster. That when this research goes on about the advancement of the advocacy and research positions, we are very careful not to lose sight of the gift those commissions and their work might bring to the disciple-making enterprise. Thank you. Thank you. The microphone seven. Uh, Ryan Krause, uh, Altoona District, about to be commissioned, so laity now, but soon to become clergy. I would like to propose an amendment to the recommendation. Uh, this would be on page eight of the booklet, looking at line four, the sentence, the sentence that starts there, uh, while being sensitive to di the diversity of persons and the geographic distribution, the task will be defined and train the best leadership for this new way of thinking and doing conference. Uh, the, the amendment I would propose is to delete that beginning clause while being sensitive to the diversity of persons 
and geographic distribution, and then add a second sentence after line six that says this, with this focus in view, ministry teams will be strongly encouraged to promote diversity of persons and geographic regions in its members. And if I can get a second, I'll speak to that. I heard a second. You may do so. Uh, first, I want to say that I was uh, encouraged by the comments that were made uh, just a few moments ago about uh, the representation on the leadership teams and about the, the focus wanting to be passion and the goal for ministry and making disciples. Uh, but what I would not want to be lost in that sort of a conversation uh, is uh, diversity and kind of the, the importance and the blessings that diversity brings. And so uh, I would simply, especially um, considering the work of some of the ministry teams that do uh, are, are directly connected to diversity and age and ethnicity and things like that, um, that it would be good to have a stronger statement about diversity for the teams. Thank you. Are the, now we're on the amendment, which is on page 8, beginning at line 4 in the document, Recommendation 30. Are the, is there discussion on this amendment? The microphone 4, please. George Reynolds, Lingolstown Life, clergy. Uh, I'd like to speak against the amendment. Uh, the reason I speak against the amendment is I think the conference is trying to find the people who are passionate, people who are leaders, and I don't think that we need to limit those kinds of uh, roles to people just to make sure that we're inclusive. I think we need, if we're going to move forward as a conference, we need to find people who are the true leaders, people who are passionate leaders, people who can be effective in providing leadership, and if we're not necessarily equal in terms of representations, that's okay. I want to see people who are strong leaders giving leadership to this, this change in our structure, not to uh, just making sure that we're inclusive of everyone. Thank you. Microphone two. Um, Josephina Perez, Myrtle Street United Methodist Church in Scranton, um, clergy. Um, I, I don't... What I'm looking for is some clarification, Bishop. I have a concern, um, and I don't know what I don't want to be out of order. I'm not sure how to frame this, but um, my congregation is, as you called earlier, started out as mighty white, and one of the things we've had to look at is how did we become mighty white, and and I think we can ask ourselves that question as a conference. How did we get here? How did we become mighty white? Because if we don't understand that, we won't be able to move forward to be anything else. And so for a congregation like mine, it is necessary to be intentional about how we move forward. If we don't have intentionality, their thinking will not be transformed and changed, and they will not be thinking in terms of diversity. They have been become a transformed congregation because of the intentionality that is behind it. But I'm, I don't see in the, the language here a specific way or plan or place, and I'm concerned We're about that. We're on the amendment now. Are you supporting the amendment or not? I, I don't know that I'm comfortable with the language of it, and I'm not equipped to change it right now. I'm, I have a lot of concerns around this whole area. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion on the amendment? Are you ready to vote? If I'm sorry? Oh, yes, thank you very much. So the amendment, beginning at line four, you strike, beginning at the words while, down to distribution, and then begin with the sentence, the task will be to find, etc. And at the end of that sentence, ending with conference, you add the words. Okay, I, I'm trying to read my writing. Um, with the focus in, in view... I'm sorry, we need help from the secretaries. Why don't you, would you read that last sentence, please? I'll read it again. Just the last sentence. Yeah, so this is page eight. Okay, of, of recommendation 30. It should be in your, in the conference workbook. No. Yeah? We're at... Yes, we're at Recommendation 30, 
page four, uh, page eight, mm -hmm. line four so, on line that four. recommendation. Are we all with us now? And we strike the first clause of the statement, which begins while, concludes with distribution, and so that sentence will begin with the task will be. And then now if you'll read the words that you added after the word conference. Mm. With this focus in view, ministry teams will be strongly encouraged to promote diversity of persons and geographic region in its members. Thank you. And this is what is before us. Sorry, uh, microphone eight. I would... I would speak uh, against it. Stacy Crawford. Microphone eight. Stacy Crawford, Greencastle First United Methodist. I would speak against the amendment if I could. Um, in Christ there is no more Greek nor Jew, male nor female, slave nor free. All are one in Christ. We are all equal. And I just think we should leave it as it is if we're trying to develop some new structures and we're trying to have a biblical framework for them. We're all equal. And I think the only parameter we should give is a spiritual gifting of the people involved in these committees, whether they're all from one place or, or all female, all male or whatever. It should just be according to the gifting that God has given. And so we can all not tie the hands of the people who are setting up these things to begin with. We should just go with the leading of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual gifting of the people involved. Thanks. We've had two speeches in opposition to the amendment. We're ready for speeches in support. Are you speaking in support of it? Microphone two, please. I'm Bill Benson. I'm from Hope United Methodist Church out of the Altoona District. I'm clergy. I speak in for the amendment. Too many times in our church's history is, have we stuck with the status quo and, and, and kept that mindset that we can't have diversity, we can't have change, because if we have change, or we, it, it's taken something away from us and... and Always that statement has always been, well, we can include. It's okay the way it is. And, and I believe I speak for the, the amendment that we use the diversity that our conference has. Thank you. Thank you. Microphone 8, are you speaking in support? Yes. Microphone 8. Jim Hollister, First Tawanda, clergy. I speak in favor of the amendment. Uh, if we are not intentional about including then we will be likely to uh, commit the same kind of siloing that this uh, process is trying to avoid. Okay, thank you. We've had two, four, two against. Microphone three. Yes, Carol Beasley Topliff, clergy from Bethany and Marysville. I speak also in favor of the amendment. Um, it seems to me that in the first place it's just holding up that to encourage the teams to remember to seek diversity as they are seeking those with spiritual gifts. And I agree with my sister who said that without continuing to try to be intentional about this, um, we will not reach out in ways to really represent that kingdom of God on earth. All right. Microphone five. My name is Sean Patrick Smith. I'm with I'm clergy from the Woodland area, and I speak strongly against this amendment. It sounds to me like the only real change in this amendment is to put the word very in front of while being sensitive, while being very sensitive. I believe that if we are sensitive to the diversity of persons and geographic distribution, I believe that that will be sufficient in order to, for us to find and train the best leadership. Uh, I don't think that we ought to pigeonhole uh, different classes of people uh, based on anything other than meritocracy. Okay, Thank I'll you. turn to Mike Bell now, who's pre representing those who are bringing this forward. I apologize. I wrote this paragraph. This paragraph has nothing to do with what you all are arguing about. <laughs> It's important, and I thought when I wrote it, I was saying we want to be very careful about being diverse. This representative piece, if you go back and read the document very closely, representative uh, committees are those who are seated by saying we want someone from the Board of Church and Society, someone from religion and race, someone from this, someone. That's what it's speaking about when it says representative. These are not representative teams in that way. They have a passion for ministry and a wider gamut of mission and ministry. 
So when I wrote that, I was really intending to be very inclusive in what I was doing, but I was talking about something different than I think we're hung up on now uh, at the moment. It's important what you're saying. I just want to be clear that I want you all to understand what representative teams are. Uh, right. or non-representative teams. It is now before us. Are, will, if you will support the amendment as stated, would you lift a hand? If you are opposed, would you lift a hand? Then it is not passed. And we're back to the main motion. Microphone two. Thank you. Uh, Lou Parks, Wesley Seminary, Mom. clergy. Um, on page... Seven and lines 19 through 22, I would like to strike starting with if at the end of 19 and ending at effective on line 22. Strike those uh, two and a half or sentences or so. If there's a second, I'll speak to it. If you will restate the line <clears throat> you're on, please, yes. you're on page seven. Page seven. Line. 19 through 22, uh, but it starts at the end of 19 with the word if and ends with the word effective on 22. If there's a second, I'd speak to it. Yeah, yes, there okay. is a second. Okay. And you, you may speak. Yeah, uh, my, my concern uh, in this document, which I assume will be reviewed by Judicial Council, uh, is that we get past and that it be successful. Uh, the thing that, one of the things that hung up uh, Plan UMC uh, with Judicial Council was giving this interim power that only belonged to General Conference. There's a parallel situation with the Annual Conference. Nobody can take on Annual Conference authority between sessions of Annual Conference and to me, that's what those sentences uh, indicate. So I think uh, just for the facility of, of this, we ought to eliminate those sentence, that sentence. Thank you. Are there others who wish to speak? Microphone five. Chuck Sprankle serving uh, Manchester St. Paul, York District. Um, I'm going to speak against that amendment. Uh, I see a situation where we're trying to have a small group that can react quickly to the situation on the ground and to make a difference uh, on a regular basis, and yet we've got language then that says, we'll give you that authority, but we won't give you any power to do that. That makes absolutely no sense to me. We need to have that strength. They need to be able to make those changes because the situations change as time go on. They need to make those differences that we can be a more effective church, both locally and corporately. Are there others who would? Microphone 7. Janet Worth, St. Paul, Chambersburg, clergy. Um, I also had the same concern um, when I read this. And um, I, one question, is it going to go before the Judiciary Committee, this document? The, you Council. mean the Judicial Council? Yes. Will it end up there? Not at this point, unless <laughs> it's asked for. Okay. Um, and um, so my, I had the same concern. Uh, about giving the power of the annual conference to other entities. I wonder if it would pass if it were by, instead of and, by adjusting the structure. I have no problem with them adjusting the structure, and that may pass Judiciary Council. Is that what you intended, by adjusting? Or they can act as the annual conference and also adjust structure? Well, right now, the amendment which is all we have before us, is to remove this. And my question is, does... I hear your question, it? but all we have before us is to remove the amendment, that, that sta those sentences. Well, that without sentence. further clarification on it, I think it needs to be removed and readjusted. So I stand in favor of removing it. Thank you. Microphone three. Milton Lawyer, Shepherdstown Church, Laity. 
I would move, uh, support the amendment. It seems to me that it's giving an awful lot of power to people. And um, since the annual conference meets every year, I don't think that there's that much urgency to do something within uh, a couple of months. General conference is different when they only meet every four years. You, you might need something to be done in the inter interim, but I really would not favor giving this kind of power to a small group when we meet every 12 months. Thank you. Are there others who wish to speak? Are you ready to vote? Can I say yes. Yeah, I, I, I just, two things really quickly. One, the thing that gets you in trouble with the Judicial Council is mi mixing finance with program. We haven't done that, number one. Uh, number two, it is the, the need to respond quickly to needs. Uh, for instance, let's go and look at the flooding situation last year. What if we had to say we can't do anything about that until we go to annual conference, folks? At some point, someone has to have a little bit of authority to move. And all we're changing, all that document is asking to change, is the structure itself, to add a task force, uh, to, to, uh, to adjust who's where, or, or something like that. All right. That, yes, microphone two. May, may I have a last word? Yes. Well, the nature of what we're doing in this reorganization plan is giving a lot of power to those structures. And, uh, and, and in fact, that's going to be the basic power. And uh, the nature of it is if an annual conference passes it, it's an effect. It's law. And uh, I, I think it is uh, required then that it stay law until that body, the annual conference, uh, act on it. And I'm, I'm not sure about this either, but I think that every annual conference structuring plan is reviewed by judicial council, whether it's asked for or not. Because, uh, well, several have been well, shot down over let, this issue. I think Jerry's coming forward to respond to that. And as the general secretary of the general conference, he's, he knows a lot. <laughs> Bishop Middleton, Jerry Reist pastor at Grace United Methodist Church, Harrisburg. I respectfully request a decision of law regarding the proposed structure for the Susquehanna Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Does it meet all disciplinary requirements? And having said that, that being the request, I have it in writing to give to you. The reason I'm asking for it is not because I'm trying to oppose the structure or argue with the structure, but just to get us past this point we need to have it reviewed at some point. Let's have it reviewed. It'll be done, hopefully, at the fall session of the Judicial Council, and we'll be ready to implement in January as per request. Jerry, let me just clarify. Can that be done before it's passed? It hasn't yet been passed. I said proposed structure, so that'll take place whether it's passed or not. It's not, a, it's not in effect. As my understanding is, the structure takes effect January 1st. If we If we pass it. it. So until it takes effect, it's the proposed structure, which is why I worded it the way I did. I, I'm not, is this motion debatable? I need a little help here. Uh, uh, actually, that, Bishop, it's not a motion at all. I'm presenting you a with a written for request a declaratory. for a declaratory decision then it's your, at your discretion you will make such a decision. That will automatically go to the Judicial Council, and the Judicial Council will then tell us whether there are deficiencies in the, in the proposed structure, and we can stop debating the issue. I don't mean to give you a headache, Bishop. I'm just trying to move us along. Well, if that was not your intention, you failed. <laughs> I need a little help, Jerry, from you. We don't even vote on this. Is that correct? That's correct. All right. Thank you. Now, we still have all of this before us. Uh, yes. A point, another point of order. <laughs> What we did, I believe, was to move the entire report. Maybe what, and what we're modifying is the report section, not the action section. 
I'm wondering if we should not have been focusing on the resolution that's at the back of the report rather than getting hung up on the details of how did we get to the resolution. Because the resolution explains what we want to do. In terms of the timing of this, folks, we're looking at trying to implement a four-year plan of action and, and use six months of opportunity time to train. If we have to wait another six months, you know, we're, we're, we're really getting hung up on the old days. Uh, I'm going to declare a recess for 15 minutes so we can sort this out. Unexpected recess occurred when a, when a request was made for a declaratory deci decision. And I want to turn to Jerry now to ask if he would make a statement. Bishop Middleton, Jerry Reese, Pastor Grace United Methodist Church, Harrisburg. I withdraw the request. I have taken it physically back. I understand that some people misunderstood my intention. My intention was not to stop the debate on this matter, nor was it to discourage us from adopting the, the uh, proposal. It was only to answer the questions of legality in some of these issues. And so, Bishop, I would request, and this being an informal request then, that what's adopted be referred to our chancellor for review so that we have a legal opinion on whether anything doesn't meet the disciplinary requirements and that we proceed at this point with our discussion, debate, and adoption of this proposal. Thank you very much, Jerry, and I happily re uh, receive that request. Should it be adopted, we will refer it to the Chancellor Jay Lehman for review. And now we are back to the... Um, to the amendment on, on point 19, page 7. Microphone 2. Roger Menser, Bethlehem, Dallas, town pastor. I move the question on the parks amendment. Question is called. It requires uh, two-thirds. If, you if you're ready for the question, would you lift a hand? Any opposed? Same sign. Then we're ready for the question. And the question before us is the parks amendment which appears on page 7, and it is the removal of that phrase. If you would support that, would you lift a hand? If you don't support it, would you lift a hand? Then it is not supported, and what is before us, and I want to clarify, I want us to move to page 21. We've been looking at the details, and those are important, and we can still come back to those if you need to, but what is really before us is this Proposal for the structure, as you see on page 21, also supported by the graphs and the documents and the other materials in the fold, on the fold out. And so that is what is before us now. Is there discussion on this proposal for a new structure? Microphone 8. Bishop Middleton, Michelle Somerville, New Visions Parish, Wellsboro District. I have a request and I pray, it, I hope it's not out of order. But I would ask before we continue, after the break of all the discussion on the floor and all the discussion on the stage, could we not take a deep breath and focus and pray before we continue? Thank you very much. We were remind, reminded this morning, weren't we, to take a deep breath. Are we ready for a deep breath? Let's do that. Let's take a deep breath. A holy and loving God, we know there is only one question before us. What is your yearning for us? What is your desire for us as your people? Beloved sisters and brothers who are in love with you. What is your desire for your churches? For the people of your churches, and more importantly, O oh God, what is your desire for those beyond our churches, those who are searching for you? Help us in our time of discernment to be faithful to you and to your yearning for us. Amen. Microphone 6. 
Earl Roberts, Hemlock Grove United Methodist Church in Greentown, Pennsylvania. I'm concerned about the Christian unity and conference council or commission on Christian unity and interreligious concerns. Uh, That's, as I understand, subsumed under the mission board. Uh, This is something that is not simply an optional thing for us to deal with. Christ prayed that we be one. And I would think that maybe you can do faith and life work with the commission board, but the faith and order uh, work of our cons- our consolation with other denominations, our consideration of our faith tradition, this needs its attention somewhere else. The, uh, as I understand it, in the general church structure, the bishops are the ecumenical officer, and the National Commission on Christian Unity relates to the bishop. And I guess I would like to see the commission restored and responsible to the bishop to carry for these matters. Was that an amendment? Can that be made as a motion? Well, normally you would make a motion and then you would make a statement. Sorry. Thank you. Is there other discussion? Are you ready for... To vote on this, if you would support this, microphone six. I, I need to clarify. If you'll notify. Uh, oh, I'm Wayne Shuey, Handy Nine Methodist Church. I, I, I'd like to clarify something. I realize that this is just a basic outline, more or less. And part of the earlier discussion was on delegation of authority of powers in emergency situations. Uh, is Mike around, or whoever was on that committee around to answer a quick question? If I'm offensive, I'm, I'm sorry. It's my military, 20 years of military background and, and crisis management kicking in. But as this document reads, it's more, it reads as though card blank authority without having to go up the chain in an emergency crisis. Is there plans that's not in here to provide these teams with a checklist to trigger the authority to make the -the on-the-spot necessary decision in a crisis? Um, If I led you to believe that it was a crisis situation, because I used the flood image probably, I apologize for that. That wasn't the the, uh, my intention. Um, What we're talking about, the flexibility to make decisions, is to say that when a priority arises in the annual conference of some kind of need, whatever that need may be, this structure would provide the flexibility midstream to say, we need a task force to deal with that, let's implement it. What would be the criteria for that? When the visioning leadership team, the cabinet, and the tables or the teams would decide that that was necessary. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's just my question. Microphone three. Milton Lawyer, Shepherdstown, Laity. Bishop, I just have one question for you about procedure. We're we're getting ready to vote on recommendation 30.1. What happens to recommendation 30? Is that automatically considered passed when we pass 30.1, or are we not going to ever vote on that? Uh, It seems to me we have a 30 and we have a 30.1. I think I turned the mic for that. Well, I'm... uh, I'm a little puzzled, too, but I think that what we have there is a report coming back from the visioning leadership team explaining the rationale for the structure uh, form. Uh, It was an attempt to say in in as few pages as as we could what is a very difficult thing to explain. Here's how we think it's going to work. And and so the the 30 is really a, a report, if I'm correct, uh, leading to the, the resolution, and that's why it was a separate piece added on after. Okay, then that really should have been a report instead of a Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Are we ready to vote now? <laughs> Microphone seven. I'm sorry. A motion Janet. to call the question would help us. Janet Microphone words, seven. Jenna Words from St. Paul Chambersburg Clergy. Is that the case then on page 20 where, where I'm voting to adopt this revised structure plan? What is this revised structure plan? The report that follows that we didn't vote? Correct. And okay, also the thank document. You. Thank you. Are I we call ready for to the vote? question. 
The question has been called for. If you would uh, support the call for the question, would you lift a hand? Any opposed, same sign. That appears to be almost unanimous. And if you're ready to support this and will support that, would you lift a hand? Any opposed, same sign? Then you have done so. Thank you very much. Woohoo! <laughs> okay.